Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to Python tutorial 5 of the course Time Dependent Quantum Chemistry. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, uh, we will uh, go over the one dimensional wave packet dynamics which will be solved numerically. So, this is the, um, uh, the ultimate uh, motivation we had in this course. Systematically, we have learned how to um, what does it mean by Python programming? We have presented that. Then we have presented how to get the uh, expectation value, how to normalize a discretized wave function. Then we have checked uh, how to get the eigenstate and eigen um, uh, values associated with a particular sta uh, sta uh, system uh, or Hamiltonian. And this is the ultimate motivation. Uh, which where we would like to take a look at how the wave packet uh, can propagate in time, particularly one dimensional wave packet propagate in time numerically. So, that any potential can be uh, used to check the uh, propagation. We have already outlined uh, the split operator approach to solve the TDSC and uh, we will see the numerical implementation of uh, in Python programming for this split operator approach to, to propagate that one. So, the um, aim is following. Um, we may have a potential like this. This is let us say potential and this is the x axis and this is v x and I may create a web packet here. When I am creating web packet and drawing web packet like this way through this envelope function, I am not just uh, showing the entire web packet. The actual web packet looks like this. There is an oscillatory part in addition to this envelope function. But to, uh, to reduce the uh, complexity, we just simply use this um, envelope function to show the web packet. So, the web packet has been created let us say at this initial position x naught and it should propagate now. And if it is propagating, when it is propagating it will experience a potential. So, it may so happen that if, if this is the potential I have. So, in chemistry we talk about the reactant and on this side you have the product that is all about the simplest form of the chemical reaction. Reactant is converting to product and when reactant is converting to product, um, there is a wave packet dynamics going on on the potential energy surface. And if we know the dynamics, if we know the time scale of this propagation, we know the dynamics of this reaction, this reactant converting to product. So, wave packet dynamics constitute the very basic uh, hmm, uh, quantum dynamics in chemistry. And uh, it is very easy to understand also. We know that wave packet analytically we have solved it when the wave packet propagates it will spread out and it will decrease the amplitude in general that is the that is the basic idea. But it is not true always if, if the wave packet has been created uh, in the uh, in the harmonic potential. So, what happens in the harmonic potential it is it it is it it is a narrow wave packet we create, then it forms, uh, it spreads out in the, in, in the middle and then again it becomes narrow. So, the, the, the exact nature of wave packet 
and its dynamics depends on what kind of potential it is experiencing. But mostly web packet when it will be propagating it will be spreading out and when let us say when web packet is propagating in time this is time axis web packet is propagating in time is spreading out it does not mean that the particle size was previously very narrow and now it is spreading out. It is not representing the particle size, particle itself is a quantum particle, quantum particle is a very tiny little particle, it is a point particle. But the problem is that uh, its exact position I cannot determine, uh, it is just um, what will happen that I will have a distribution. So, single experiment can give me one experiment, one exact, I mean one um, tiny, I mean point position, but if you, if you repeat the experiment, we will see that the will have a position distribution. So, this is the distribution function which is evolving as a function of time, that is the, that is the meaning. We should not, we should never say that, okay, size of the particle looks like um, uh, a camel, let us say this this, 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 this size is looks like a camel and, um, and this camel is converted to uh, let us say a dinosaur, it is not like that. The size of the particle does not change, size of the particle remains to be the tiny little particle that is why quantum effect is showing up, it is a point particle, but its distribution function its distribution function is going to spread out that is the that is the meaning of it. And uh, so, this is this is something which you should remember another thing is that uh, when web packet let us say let us say uh, a flight let us say a flight if I if I have a mountain here and a flight is flying over the mountain. when a flight is flight is uh, flying over the mountain, it can reach from point A to point B, that is the classical picture. It can reach from point A to point B, from let us say Bangalore to uh, Kochi or, or Delhi, it can, it can reach there with 100 percent probability as long as it is above the this, this barrier of the mountain. But whenever we think about the quantum dynamics, you look at this, this particle is actually having energy above this barrier and when it is moving classically we would say that okay, 100 percent this entire probability will come down here. But that does not happen because of this barrier, existence of this barrier here always there will be a scattering at this point. Even if it is above the barrier, it will have a scattering. There is a probability of the web packet going back and there is a probability of web packet moving forward always. And that limits the percent yield or, or, or the, the, the kinetics or dynamics of the entire chemical process. So, we should always remember this one, this is something which will be um, if time permits we will study it in the quantum scattering part. This is the, so quantum scattering is an important subject in chemical reactivity and uh, we, we study that one and it suggests that as a very unusual um, uh, outcome of quantum scattering, even if the particle is above the barrier, it will be scattered because of the presence of this barrier. The barrier is present and that is why it will be scattered and to some what percentage will be scattered that depends on where you, you are with respect to the barrier, but there will be a scattering. And if there is a scattering, there is no chance of 100 percent probability transmission here. So, product formation is limited by the barrier and where you are. So, this is something which you should keep it in mind and these are the effects like quantum scattering effects and all these things we can um, understand better with the help of this wave packet dynamics. So, this contrary, this, this, this contradic contradictory picture should be kept in your mind always that classical particle can uh, transmit the barrier, I mean can go over the barrier, 
with 100 percent probability, but par, uh, quantum particle when it is going even over the barrier, it cannot transfer the probability 100 percent. There is a always there will be a scattering and a percentage will be reflected back. Okay. So, with this and, 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 and question is why we need numerical methods? We have used analytical approach to uh, for wave packet dynamics. Wave packet dynamics, we have seen analytical approach and we have seen that it works for zero interaction potential when the particle is not experiencing the potential, it works for um, um, linear potential when the particle is experiencing linear potential and it works for analytical approach works for uh, when you have this um, exponent uh, the, the quadratic potential. So, these are the three uh, situations where analytical approach works and we can solve it analytically. But if we go beyond this quadratic potential or linear potential or uh, this uh, zero potential, you need to solve it uh, numerically. And these are the case uh, very in practical situation we do not get uh, this um, linear potential, we do not get this quadratic potential even. In practical scenario my uh, potential may have this kind of uh, potential and this is neither uh, uh, linear potential nor this uh, quadratic potential. We have to uh, create our own potential and based on that potential we have to propagate it. In that case we need the numerical solution to this um, wave packet dynamics. So, numerical solution to this wave packet dynamics is very important for practical application and we will go over it. Uh, parts of uh, what the, 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 the techniques we are going to use uh, for this entire wave packet dynamics that uh, part of those techniques we have already gone over Fourier transform, the normalization, we will just integrate them and then we will uh, come up with the solution. So, we will we will make use of uh, as I have told uh, earlier that uh, we'll, we are going to make use of split operator approach uh, in this uh, in this uh, numerical problem. And um, the conceptually the probability of finding the particle at any given position and time is determined by the square of absolute value of the wave function. So, if I have an wave function like this, then um, the, the probability of finding the particle, this is this gives you quantum mechanics always gives the probabilistic answer to the question where is the particle. And uh, um, it gives the probability, so if psi xt is the wave function, then the probability function is become psi xt absolute square of the absolute value of the wave function. So, uh, the, the, this is something which we have uh, uh, understood in this in this course as we did before um, uh, during the um, uh, translational motion discussion of translational motion. Um, uh, let us assume that the initial wave function, so the entire wave packet dynamics uh, is based on the um, or any quantum dynamics is based on few steps. The steps is that we have to construct the initial wave function, that is the initial gauge we have to make. And what kind of initial gauge, how to get, make a good initial gauge that depends on our understanding of the experimental condition because the particle how it is starting its um, evolution uh, that has to be decided based on the experimental condition. And if the and that is why we need to understand the experiment or experimental condition very well so that we can come up with a um, proper initial wave function representing the system or representing the particle. But here we will assume that at t equals 0 initial time I have the wave function like this. This is called propagating wave function, propagating Gaussian wave function. So, we have seen that. Uh, this is called propagating Gaussian 
web packet. So, this part is responsible for the propagation and this part is responsible for the envelope. So, this uh, fast varying component is represented by e to the power i k naught x and this part envelope function blue part is given by e to the power minus a x square. These are the two components we have and this is normalized as we see it is normalized and that is the another requirement we have to always begin with normalized wave function and then go for the solution. Good thing about TTAC is that it preserves norm, norm of the wave function. So, normalization is not time dependent anymore, normalization will be constant and that is good thing because every time we have to um, 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 confirm that at any given time the total probability of finding the particle from minus infinity to plus infinity has to be 1 because I have single particle which is moving. So, that this is this is the only interpretation of quantum mechanics through this probabilistic idea. Now, uh, uh, so, this is this is our initial wave function that is the assumption we have made and we know that this k naught this k naught is going to this is this is a real constant real constant uh, representing the angular wave number of the carrier wave of the wave packet. These are the meaning of this um, angular wave number is now clear to us in two different contexts we have presented it in Fourier transform we have presented it and also in the context of translational motion we have presented it. And, um, and we have also understood that this k naught the moment the, 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 this is x domain representation of the wave packet. If we do the Fourier transform we get another um, because it is a uh, Gaussian uh, uh, shape in the x domain. So, in the k domain Fourier domain we also get a Gaussian and the center of the Gaussian is actually represented by k naught. So, this these this, all these consequences and features of our wave packet is known to us already based on the Fourier transform um, uh, discussion we had previously. And also we know that the uh, this k naught is actually defining the velocity of the particle. This is defining the velocity of the particle. So, k naught has multiple perspective ok. Um, it is it is defining that velocity of the particle, it is defining momentum of the particle, it is defining the center of the spectrum, this uh, momentum domain spectrum. It is uh, so, so k naught has many perspective and those perspective should be clear to us before we go for or before we make use of this wave function for our um, um, wave packet dynamics. And another thing we remind here that the, the way we have taken this function, this envelope function e to the power minus a x square, we know that that this function is centered at x equals 0 that we know. So, e to the power minus a x minus x naught whole square this is centered at x equals x naught, but if I do not have x naught then it is centered at it is centered at um, x equals 0. So, this is something we should remember that we are starting with a wave packet which is centered at x equals 0 and we will see how it is evolving. Now, question in this entire uh, problem is that how do we explore how do we explore the wave function numerically given the initial wave function
So, the question is how do we explore psi x and analytically we have seen that this is an analytical approach we previously used and we have seen that this is the wave packet we get and finally we have got this integration done and one final wave packet expression we have been able to produce in the um, uh, earlier um, uh, one, one of the modules. What we are going to do is that we are going to do the same thing numerically and we can check what we previously got analytically and uh, how does it compare with the numerical solution. So, so in order to do this if we, if we now jump into the numerical problem um, it is clear that we are going to use this t equals 0 time at t equals 0 time we are going to use this uh, wave function and the first step of this uh, entire procedure is to normalize the wave function. So, first we will check how to normalize the wave function this is quite uh, uh, clear to us now. Um, I will move to a laptop and we will write down the uh, initial wave function as follows. First we will be importing certain modules and sub modules for our work importing the required library from scipy import we will import a square root uh, functionality, a range functionality and exponential functionality from scipy dot integrate this procedure is quite similar to uh, what we did to find out the normalized wave function in python tutorial 2 and uh, that's the that's the procedure so we we are because we are familiar with it and uh, that's the reason why i can direct, directly write down what i need uh, to import so from scipy integrate i have to import uh, simpson's method because I have to do this integration numerical integration through Simpson's method from matplot library pi plot I will import plot x limit and show. All these features are known to you now. Now I will be first creating the x grid. When I first create the x grid I will write out x minimum equals minus 1000, x maximum equals plus 1000, plus 1000.2 I will write down because the this point will be excluded from the list prepared by the arrange functionality and then dx I will place 0.2. So, we have this will create the x domain and um, then I will define x equals a range functionality x minimum x maximum and dx. So, this will create the array now I will be able to define the define and normalize the initial wave function. Good comment line will help you uh, remember what you are doing right now because it is very easy to forget this programming unless you do the practice regularly. Exponential of minus x square I will make minus x square by 2. It is just that is the way I am selecting it does not need to be like that anything you can select as long as it is a Gaussian envelope it is perfectly fine and then this propagating part which is 1 j we know that uh, the complex number is written in python as j then cannot 
then multiplied by x. Now, x is actually t uh, sorry this is this is x domain yeah this is x domain and um, uh, so once we have defined this one this definition we can write down this is a traveling Gaussian form. Then we have to find out the probability density probability density would be given by absolute value of PSI. This is the probability density then I can find out norm, norm equals Simpson's method y this y and x I have to give and y is going to be the probability density comma x. So, it will be sampled on each point of x and it will be done it will be the numerical integration will be done numerical integration in the end giving you the area under the curve and finally, I will be uh, uh, plotting this PSI uh, sorry PSI norm I am getting as uh, the wave function divided by the norm divided by SQRT of the norm. That is the definition of uh, that is the way you can you normalize the wave function. So, this is the way we have uh, uh, done it and uh, as we can see that this plotting part we can avoid right now we can just check whether uh, uh, what we get from here and this is the way it can normalize it. So, I can uh, write down print norm So, if we, if we run the program we see that it is printing the uh, the value the norm it has it has given 1.77 uh, value and um, it is a, it can be assumed that and I can al I can also plot um, if we want to uh, check the the wave function which we are dealing with. So, in that case I need this mat plot library dot pi plot we have to use plot show x limit these are the things we need. So, we can plot all even plot PSI norm comma this is x comma this part is x comma PSI norm. So, I will remind this also I have reminded before, but I can remind again see when you use Simpson's method you write y value first and then x value, but when you use plot you write x value first and then y value. So, uh, y array these are all array. So, that is the way it does um, the, the, the syntaxes are. So, I can again run the program and I can see that um, it can be plotted as this and um, we have um, uh, we can we can make the uh, we can do one thing we can uh, change the x limit we can control the x limit as uh, let us say minus 5 to plus 5 let us see what happens if we use minus 5 to plus 5 yeah this is this is the uh, web packet we have right now which is having an oscillation and the, if you do if you forget that oscillation it is going to give you the uh, the envelope function. So, this is this is all we have the initial wave function we have defined already and we can see that it is centered at 0 which is x equals 0 position. So, um, uh, these are the these are the points we have uh, uh, found from the 
from this. So, now we will go back to uh, the, um, uh, the, the discussion here. What we have done in this is that the momentum of the free particle, if we look at the momentum of the free particle, momentum of the particle that is going to be h cut k naught that is the momentum we get. All these calculations in general we do in atomic unit. It is an unit system uh, which is very frequently used in calculation of atoms and molecules, electronic structure calculations of atoms and molecules and then wave packet dynamics all these calculations are used um, based on atomic unit. Under the atomic unit there are certain things we uh, assume uh, or, or we consider. Under atomic unit H cut is considered to be one atomic unit and in that case momentum we get as K naught in atomic unit. So, when I say momentum equals K naught in atomic unit it is K naught. Now, if the particle is considered to be an electron, if we consider the particle is an electron, in that case uh, this momentum will be represented by this K naught and m e is considered to be again in atomic unit mass of the electron is considered to be one atomic unit. In that case velocity is equal to K naught that is the uh, and in uh, this is in atomic unit only. So, when I have considered in the in the in this numerical uh, procedure uh, I have considered here I have considered you can see that um, this K naught we have considered to be 1. It means that I have considered velocity of the particle. So, the particle is considered to be electron to be electron and velocity equals K naught equals 1 in atomic unit and it means that it is 1 atomic unit of velocity. So, what is the velocity with which the particle electron is traveling in my problem? In this problem we are assuming that the particle is traveling initial velocity was 1 atomic unit which is equivalent to I mean one atomic unit may not make sense to you, but which is equivalent to in the SI unit if we write down it is going to be 2.188 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. This is the SI unit equivalent SI unit component uh, SI unit value. So, we, we, are, we are assuming that particle is traveling with this velocity. So, uh, what is the idea of atomic unit? Atomic unit was proposed by Hartree in the beginning of the, I mean uh, when the quantum, quantum mechanics was being proposed. Um, Hartree actually uh, came up with this idea that we should use atomic unit in these calculations because we are going to deal with very large number or very small number. Sometimes we may deal with minus 10 this kind of number or sometimes we can deal with this kind of large number and in order to use this kind of large number um, it is going to be very difficult to use the SI unit um, for this calculation. It will be much convenient to do with this atomic unit and slowly entire quantum mechanics community has accepted that yes it is the convenient way to go ahead. So, when I have written here x maximum x minimum that 1000 and 1000.2 it is assuming the atomic unit atomic unit of length. So, when I say that the web packet is centered at 0 that is 0 atomic unit of length if the web packet has moved from 0 to some other value let us say 
10 then this is the 10 atomic unit of length. Everything has been represented in the atomic unit and based on this representation only um, if I think about the kinetic energy of the particle kinetic energy of the particle is going to be half Me we are considering electron as a particle half Me and then V square which is nothing but half Me is 1 and V equals K which is K naught square. So, half K naught square is the kinetic energy of the particle in atomic unit. So, as you can already realize that if we use an atomic unit many uh, uh, factors um, is being simplified if we if we use the atomic unit. So, that is the that is the basic idea remaining part uh, whatever we have written in the program is equivalent to what the way we have learned uh, the uh, normalization thing the, the how to normalize a discretized wave function. So, this is a discretized wave function representation and we are normalizing it. So, first thing we have to do is the we have to normalize the wave function and uh, initial wave function and then we have to propagate the initial wave function. The propagation part we will look at in the uh, in the next session.